How difficult are you finding it to get seen at your local surgery these days? Well, GPs are telling us their services are creaking under intolerable pressures and that the crisis is only going to get worse unless the Scottish Government intervenes. Later in the programme, we'll be questioning the Health Secretary. But first, this report from Ollie Dickinson, who spent the day at Elmbank Medical Practice in Aberdeen, one of the nation's busiest. What's your name? It's 8.30 a.m. and the phones are already ringing off the hook. Appointment signed, Vicky speaking, how can I help? On average, receptionists at Elmbank Medical Practice answer more than a thousand calls a day. Good afternoon, Elmbank appointment line, Ruben speaking, how can I help? On a daily basis, we see in excess of 100 unscheduled care contacts sometimes reaching 130, 150, and that workload is managed by two GPs. Um, so that equates to sort of 50 to 70 patient contacts per GP, which is two or three times above what the um, BMA recommends as, as a safe limit. We're practicing medicine, but we're not practicing it in a way that we feel is safe. You'll feel that squeezing around your arm. Elmbank's registration list has hit maximum capacity. They have around 11,000 patients on the books, so getting an appointment isn't always easy, and not everyone accepts that. We've had, if you don't give me my medication and I die, it's your fault and you'll need to live with that. Um, give me an appointment with my doctor, you're stopping me, you're a bitch. We've had staff followed to the bus stops um, by patients. I've called the police twice since I've been here on patients that have been verbally and physically aggressive. I mean, that's just soul-destroying. It's, it's absolutely soul-destroying um, because nobody comes into this, nobody comes into healthcare not wanting to do the best job, not wanting to help people. But people are horrible. I've got young staff through there who are being told, I hope you and your whole team commit suicide. And we're genuinely just trying to help. And it, and it is horrible. It's absolutely horrible. We're doing the best we can. Hello there, this is Dr Guru from Elm Bank Practice. Since 2012, the number of people trying to access GP services in Scotland has risen by 300,000. OK, Rebecca, I'll let you come and take a seat for me. Just but at the same the time, there's been a 9% decrease in practices. So, how can I help you today, Rebecca? I think I might have... I think the biggest challenge we face as a profession at the moment is the issue around demand versus capacity. Alongside that, we have an aging population. So not only are we having to look after more patients, but the patients that we are seeing are more complex, more frail, and have more illnesses that we have to manage. That takes time and it takes more GPs. And are you managing to, to, to keep down fluids? Squeezing in multiple phone consultations a day has made it easier for doctors like Dr Barner to prioritise their sickest patients. But the British Medical Association recommends GPs spend an average of 15 minutes with each person, regardless of their condition. Dr Barner says that's not possible. It's frustrating and it's heartbreaking. We come into this profession wanting to look after our patients thoroughly, uh, most importantly, safely um, and properly, uh, and we're just not able to do that with the demand that we're facing. Dr Barner says until the workload eases, every practice in Scotland is going to struggle with the recruitment and retention of medical staff. We have a couple of vacancies advertised at the moment and we've had you know, we, we, we've had some interest, but not as much as we, we would hope, you know, and that's a significant change over the last sort of 15 to 20 years. One of the big challenges for the office staff is when the people come in for an interview and we say, it's really busy, the phones will ring all the time, the phones will not stop, and people might be, and people are going to be horrible to you. You think, I'm having to tell them this in an interview when I'm trying to persuade them to come, to come and work in the, in the practice, but I have to tell them what the reality is like. This is an issue that's impacting all communities, big or small. Just a few miles up the road from Elmbank is the Inverurie Medical Practice, which cares for 30,000 people. But it has said it will hand back its licence due to a lack of available doctors meaning it will either close or be taken over by the local health board. 
over the last five years, 14 practices in Grampian have handed back their contract to the health board. That's 20% of all GP practices. Um, and that affects approximately 100,000 patients getting um, uh, decent health care. A recent Scottish Government report found that almost half of people in Scotland found it difficult to make an appointment with their GP last year. But for others, the difficulty isn't getting an appointment, it's finding a GP service that's nearby. Freecombe is a village like so many up and down Scotland. Its high street has a busy shop, pubs, a cafe and a chemist. It's even got plenty of new build housing. But what it doesn't have is a doctor's surgery. And that's because six months ago, the one here closed with patients being sent as far away as Montrose, Arbroath and Dundee. Jane Easton and her sister Helen moved to Freakham many years ago because they thought it would be a safe place to grow old. Doctor surgery on the doorstep, lives in the village, so that if anything happened, even if you had a small emergency or something, you could always phone her and she would advise you what to do. Um, and that is one of the reasons why we picked the village. The closure has left Jane, who has mobility issues, facing a lengthy journey each time she needs to see her new GP, who's based in Arbroath. I can take a bus and then I can walk if I'm not really sore. Or I have to take a taxi and that's £19 and I can't afford that, really. I really do struggle to get there on days where... Um, the pain is arthritis, but it's so painful. You bought this house as your forever home. You wanted to set up here and be here and stay here. But if there's no doctor, does that make a difference? I sometimes wish we'd never we'd bought something in Dundee um, because you more chance to have a doctor than in a village where we wanted to live. Like again, it was only because. She had, the, the surgery had such a great reputation that we decided finally to move. In 2018, BMA Scotland and the Scottish Government devised a GP contract to help ease the workload on doctors. It was aimed at expanding primary care services, recruiting 800 new GPs in a decade and providing more money to GPs who own their practice. But the BMA claims the situation remains dire and is only going to get worse. Those on the front line agree. Despite the government's uh, efforts with the new contract to introduce physiotherapists and pharmacists, which have made some difference, we need to consistently uh, actually support the teams uh, and invest in general practice to, to make it function for patients. Dr Chris Proven has been a GP at Elmbank for three decades. General practice is the cornerstone of the NHS and at times it feels as if it's on life support on certain areas of the country. And unless we stop practices closing, that's going to really harm hospitals and the whole system is in danger of, of actually falling over. So as a community, we need to, to sit down and, and speak together about how we move things forward. We hear politicians, health secretaries, first ministers saying how much they back the health service, how much they're investing in the health service, but do you think any of them would last five minutes in your job? No, categorically not. I think if I put them on the phone for 10 minutes, that would probably break them if they, if they heard the abuse that, that we get. So no, but I would be delighted to have any of them come down and visit us, but they'll do a proper stint on the phones.